Hey guys, this is House of Ramirez. Y'all already know what's up. We out here in Atlanta. I'm talking to my homeboy, my brother, um, Peter. I want to introduce you. Um, you have so much great things going for yourself. Um, and you're doing such a great job. And I want people to know what you're doing. So without any more time wasted, can you please tell us who you are and where you are from? Yeah, uh, thank you so much um, for having me on the show. Uh, my name is Peter Jacobson. I'm from Washington State originally, but I'm living in Richmond, Virginia right now. Um, and yeah, I'm, I'm a glass worker, a glass blower, um, and I'm just living over here doing work, going to Virginia Commonwealth University right now, uh, doing my glass work. Yeah, yeah, most dead, most dead. So everybody, um, oh, what's your IG handle? So people, as we're talking, they can actually go over and check you out. Uh, it's Peter Jacobson Art. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So guys, when y'all go over to his uh, page, y'all would see that he's um, great at glasswork, metalwork. And I, I want to know, like, how did you get started on this amazing journey? Uh, yeah, so I... I sort of have always been interested in creating things, making things. Um, none of, uh, neither of my parents really ever did anything like that. And it, I don't know, you sort of want to like push, <laughs> push against what your parents do, you know? So I, um, even as like a little, a little kid, uh, I just, you know, I'd see people making things and I'd get curious. So I just ask them. Uh, I met a lot of like older people I'd walk walk by and see you know like an old guy working in his garage on a you know woodworking and I'd poke my head in and ask if I could just sit in there and learn from him you know so I I learned woodworking um pretty young I started doing that and working a little bit part-time uh, at the age of 11 at a cabinet shop um and trading sort of just like my work you know mostly mostly at that time just sweeping up or sanding things doing easy stuff but mostly just for experience um and trading for supplies to let me build my own things and work on making things um just sort of taking in whatever knowledge i could um at the age of 12 i started uh through a program in in washington called hilltop artists uh, i started glass blowing and just really fell in love with it and my passion for that sort of took off after that yeah, yeah. And you're great at it. And, you know, back to what you were saying about your parents really never really did anything like this. Entrepreneurs, that's how we get the ball rolling. You know, we kind of do something outside the box and it's OK. You know, sometimes it's unfamiliar to our families and our older generations. But as long as they have or we have their support, that's all that really matters. You know, um, when you saw um, that you were interested in what that young man was doing, you offered to trade time and your time and their value knowledge and that's how you got into it you know and at 11 years old that's young um and it's a key a key point to hit like when you're young you have to be able to adventure in what you're called or move to go to you know um, a lot of times we we like stick our head in the books and that's fine but we tend to forget to to entertain our hobbies, entertain what drives us. Um, and I just wanna, you know, congratulate you for knowing what it is that moves you. Um, yeah, and just going outside the box. So that's super awesome. I wanna congratulate you for that. Um, but I wanna know, like you do uh, glass blowing, you do woodwork, you do metal as well. Like which component or which material is the one that you favor most? Uh, I think I love, I love just working with my hands. I love creating things. Um, I would say glass is by far my favorite. Um, and I definitely spend the most time uh, in glass and working in glass. And I would say that my wood and metal and ceramics um, have sort of come alongside that more as like something to, to make to help support my glass now at this point than solely by themselves, you know, so creating stands to go for the glass or creating work that intermingles with the glass but um primarily glass i would say is my my main focus right now yeah yeah and then uh you know you have the entrepreneurship drive where you're doing other things to fuel your your 
your your purpose you know your purpose is glass that's what you favor most so you're finding other ways to be creative to fuel your niche your hobby your thing to do um and you're really good at it that's what I want people to do I want people to go ahead and follow you I want people to go ahead and pay attention to the pieces that you have um if we want to support you and actually buy pieces from you where can we go what can we do to go ahead and acquire pieces from Peter <laughs> yeah um that would be awesome of course I love you know love selling work and as an artist you know it, it's hard to sell work <laughs> so um yeah, most of my work, I don't typically do production style work, um, which, you know, would be making like 100 of the same cup for, for say. Um, so most of my work, you can't find necessarily an inventory of it. Um, I do have a website, but it's sort of under construction at the moment. Um, but mo most of my work is commission based. So um, if you're interested in a, a piece of work or if you see something you like and or if you have an idea of something you would want, um, I would say either through Instagram or my my email is jacobsonglass at gmail.com and my website is um, peterjacobsonart.com. Um, and you can reach out through there or on my email or just send me a DM on Instagram. But most of my work is primarily commission-based. So if you have an idea, I'd love to make that happen for you. Yes, absolutely. And it's exclusive. And you know, House of Ramirez, we, we do everything exclusive, exclusive <laughs> interviews, exclusive shows, um, pop-up shops, and you know, exclusive spotlight on young successful entrepreneurs. So you're a successful entrepreneur making it in this life. Um, you see your purpose, you see your drive, and you have exclusive pieces. So, you know, guys, I want you guys to understand whoever's viewing this, whoever's listening, and also going to read this article. Uh, Peter has exclusive pieces. So you have to understand that once you purchase this piece, there's no other, you know, so it, it comes with exclusivity, but as well as the creative um, that Peter puts in, he puts all his effort into these pieces. So yeah, go ahead, check him out, follow him and, um, you know, just support. So I'm, I'm very proud of you. I'm like, yo, he's so cool. You know, many of us, we wish we see that and we're like, yo, that's so cool, you know, but we wish we could do that. But it takes the art to be able to blow glass and to be able to mold it in what you envision. You have to have that vision in, a, in order to bring it to life. Um, so yeah, big kudos to you. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So um, I want to ask you, um, you know, with, with life changing a bit with like last year, you know, things constantly change. It's the way of life. Change is inevitable. Um, but especially last year, we've seen like kind of a shift in things in life period. What do you think um, would make like coming from your point of view, what do you think would make this life, this world a better place? Um, like some people say communication, other people say love and compassion. Like, what do you think would make the world a better place? Yeah, I mean, I think that's a really important question right now, especially I think there's so much divide and intention across the nation and across the world. Um, I think that that's, that's definitely something I think about a lot. I think being an artist, everything, everything you create has something to say, you know, and um, I think that that's part of your job as an artist, you know, it's like, are you, you know, are you saying things that help bring people together or saying things that drive people apart? Um, and I would say, you know, I, I think, um, I don't know, to, to make the world a better place <laughs> is obviously a hard thing. I would say that I think especially right now, I think so, there's so much divide in people. I think there's, it's, it's easy. There is, there is tension in there. There's a lot of that, but I would say that, you know, through as human beings, I would say our, our relationship with people, our um, communication with people and our overall fellowship, just, just being around other people. It's, it's hard right now. And it, digital age um, through COVID, it's, it's hard, you know, there's a lot of hatred in the world right now. And I think the more just overall, just gathering and support we can have for one another, um, I think is really important right now, for sure. 
Yeah, I would agree with you. You know, um, I focus on unity. So if, if you look at the word community, the, the word unity is in the big word unity. So we have to come together and realize that at the end of the day, we all bleed the same, right? Yeah. We're all human. We have differences. Um, I tell people all the time, uh, life is one path, different paths for individuals, but same footsteps. We, we right. wake up every morning, we eat breakfast, we eat lunch, you know, the same thing for everybody right. just on different paths. And, you know, we have to show compassion. We have to be able to understand that others live life differently, but we still love them. You know, we still love you guys. You know, we y'all still love us and we all have to come together. There's no hatred. Hatred is a way to to break down all the good that we have all built thus sure. far, you know, our ancestors. And, you know, I think that moving forward, what we need to focus on is solutions, not the problems, you know, because problems are just going to continue to arise. But if we continue to focus on solutions, we can get rid of a lot of the problems, you know, and we can only do that if we communicate and we come together as a community. So, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. For yeah. sure. So, um, you know, um, as a successful entrepreneur, um, I want to pick your brain and I want to know what pieces of advice do you have for our up and coming entrepreneurs? Now, entrepreneurship, as, as you know, uh, 2020 has uh, derailed the, the common way of life. So yeah. you know, entrepreneurship comes in all ages, all sizes, and all types and forms. So mm. um, it, myself included, and everybody else listening, reading, and hearing this interview, we're all paying attention to what pieces of advice do you have for all of us that are also there as well, fighting this entrepreneurship um, endeavor and, and journey with you. What pieces of advice do you have for us? Um, I think, I mean, I, I think I am young, you know, and I, it's, it's hard for me to, sorry, it's hard for me to, you know, fully <laughs> give like full life advice, but I think just, just from what I've experienced, um, this is, this is sort of an art metaphor, but this is something that I've heard a lot. And someone mentioned to me just the other day, and this comes to mind with you saying that, um, someone told me the other day that if, you know, in your life as an artist, you're going to create maybe a hundred, a hundred percent of your work is art, you know, maybe in that amount of work, 20% of that is going to be good art. You know, you have to make a lot of mistakes. You have to make a lot of bad art. Um, you have to fail a lot for things uh, to make that 20%. And I think that it's really easy, especially um, not just in art, but just in doing anything. I think it's really easy to get hung up on that failure um i think it's easy to knock yourself down when you're not selling product when you're not making the money you were hoping you know and it's hard to make ends meet when the times are weird um but i think you know if if you can get that 20 percent once not even if it's you know you keep trying you will get it um and once you get that 20 percent, that's all you need you know um and i think that's I think that's probably the best advice I could give. Um, you know, just just keep pushing. Don't let that failure get you down um, and just keep trying. And you will get it eventually, you know. It's it's impossible not to. <laughs> exactly. Know? Yeah, you, you work so hard towards something, eventually you're going to see that energy coming back to you. You know, yeah. that's why we have to watch what we do, what we say, because energy is a real thing. So if you put yeah. your energy into your art, into your purpose, you're going right. to get the results eventually, you know, and I would agree with you, you know, we have to pay attention to the 20% of success. And it, it, the other percent, the 80% is, it, I guess I could say, like you said, failure, but it, it we can twist it around and make it a positive thing is an opportunity to sure. learn what doesn't work. So then we know what works and continue to focus on the 20%. Right. Um, and as an entrepreneur, a small business owner, I completely understand what you're saying. You know, there's so many times you're going to hit blocks and, and closed doors, but those closed doors actually pushed you in the right direction to an open avenue, right. to an open door, <laughs> you know? Um, right. And we just, if, if it's really what you want to do, then, then push through all the hurdles and all the opportunities of learning not to do certain things. And then that way you can refine your niche, refine your purpose. 
Um, right. And eventually you're going to be building so much momentum. There's not going to be an issue about the 20 or 80%. You're just going to be completely right. successful. So yeah, keep pushing. Yeah, I would yeah. agree with you. Yeah. yeah, I think that's what I'm saying. Like you can't, you can't have one without the other. You need that 80%. You need to push through those hardships. You know, like you were saying, one, one leads to the other. You know, you can't just have the, the success. <laughs> That is true. That is true. Yep. Yep. And I tell people all the time, you got to get in the mud. You got to get dirty first. Yeah. In order yeah. to wash up, you need to get dirty first. Yeah. <laughs> you need to do the work. Put in that work. <laughs> Come on now. All right. Well, you know, at, at the end of my show, I always do a house or mirror shout out. So, um, I, you know, right now we're putting the spotlight on you and all of your success. Um, you know, I want to promote you to keep doing what you're doing because it's encouraging for us to, if we don't know how to do glass blowing, what do we like to do? If he's doing it, I can do it too, you know? Um, so you're pushing us to be a better version of ourselves with the artwork, with the push and the drive that you have. Um, so the spotlight's on you. Um, I want to go ahead and give you the platform so you can put the spotlight on people that have been in your corner holding you down and backing up in your purpose so who would you like to shout out today uh i'd really love to shout out um hilltop artists it's a nonprofit organization that teaches glass blowing uh, in tacoma washington but they uh they don't just deal with that they deal with uh, they're in a, a pretty low income neighborhood and they deal with um, like struggling kids there's they offer a lot of other programs um not just that but they work through the art to sort of reach these kids and that was you know that's the reason i blow glass today was i started with them but um, since since going through that program i've volunteered and worked with them and it's a really amazing program just seeing the change it's done in a lot of kids lives um, so i'd really like to shout them out for sure most dead, most dead, yeah. Um, I think that when someone sees the opportunity to give back to the community um, and helps the under-resourced communities, that is the way to go. Uh, ultimately, I tell people when you find your purpose, you find what you're good at and you go through that journey of entrepreneurship, you're refining your business and your, your purpose so you can help others because ultimately that's the goal. Sometimes, uh, for example, myself, um, I do things in a certain way and it doesn't hurt me to do it like free. I don't mind it because I love to do this. So yeah. I do things sometimes behind the scenes that's free because it's what I do and I know that it's helping someone. So when you find that purpose and that drive, you don't mind giving back. So shout out to them for actually giving back to the community and having um, an art form way of, you know, pushing forward in life for the yeah. youth. Yeah, that's dope. That's super dope. Yeah. <laughs> cool, cool. Well, Peter, you know, I want to thank you so much for your time. I know you're busy. Um, and I want to thank you again for just, you know, doing what you're doing. It pushes us to keep pushing. You know, it, it, it encourages us to keep moving forward. Sometimes it's not easy. We're like, ah, you know, so many things to do. But if he can do it, I can do it too. So thank you. Thank you so much. And, you know, this is not the first time or the only time you're going to be on House of Mirrors. This is the first time. Um, but you'll be back, you know, when you have your art exhibit, your exclusive Peter art exhibit, you know, we'll bring you back on the show. You let us know um, when you have new pieces you want to tell us about. Um, I see you doing great things, big things worldwide. It's not just a Virginia or Washington or United States thing. You, you're, you keep the momentum going. You're going to be a worldwide uh, phenomenon. So I want to encourage you to keep doing what you're doing. Thank you. And, you know, until next time. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. Yes, thank you. All right. Yeah, bye. bye. Make sure to follow House of Ramirez on all social media platforms.